So here I am in Utah. I've never been here before. In fact, I've actually never ridden in the States before, which is kind of crazy. But here I am in Utah and I thought this would be a cool place to do a Q&A video. But before I start, there's two things I want to tell you guys about. First of all, I made a Patreon account and I'm really excited about this. I finally launched it. I've been working on this for a while. I've been planning on it for quite a while. I was originally wanting to get it launched last year, but man, like I just kind of ran out of time and I went to New Zealand and everything just kind of broke my wrist, you know, all that kind of stuff happened. And anyway, and I've been planning it a lot. And so I finally got it launched now. And I'm super excited for you guys because this is gonna be able to really like take my channel to the next level. With Patreon, like I'll be able to like get on the road more, I can explore more. And so with Patreon, um, I can really go a lot more independent and I can really do a lot more with this channel. Basically, I'm working about three days a week. I deliver bread to Costco and uh, it's a pretty good job. It's pretty early mornings, but otherwise, you know, the more I make from YouTube and from filmmaking, um, the more and more I can do, the more writing I can do, the more places I can explore, more videos I can make for you guys. So I'm super excited to finally get Patreon up for you guys. Lots more video content, extended cuts, exclusive videos and early videos, all that kind of stuff. So I really hope that I can give you guys more value through that. And the second thing I just want to tell you guys about is I got a new bike. As you can see right there, a new DaVinci Wilson. It is a 2014 carbon DaVinci Wilson. Um, yeah, I just bought it used obviously. Um, it seemed like the pretty good bike for me, and so it's pretty sweet. I did have to do some fix-ups on it to get it running really nicely, but yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. So stay tuned for a bike check video of that as well. But I think it's time to get started with the Q&A. So I just got all the questions off of Instagram, and I got a lot of them. I was surprised. I got like over 120 questions. It was pretty awesome. So first of all, will you start racing DH? Um, no, I don't plan on racing DH. Honestly, I'm just not entirely interested in just the whole racing scene. I'm just more interested in just kind of just shredding, just having fun really. So I'm not interested in starting racing. Will you ever try a backflip? Well, certainly I've tried them in foam pits, but yeah, that's been quite a while since I've done that. Um, will I try it on dirt? I would love to. Um, I don't know. I just, I definitely need to get more into like dirt jumping before I really try more tricks like that though. Cause I, I don't even have a dirt jumper right now. and. I haven't been dirt jumping in a while, so that's kind of out of the picture right now. Ever gonna switch to 27.5? Well, you know what? Um, I do plan on getting a 27.5 bike at some point. Uh, right now, like with this DaVinci Wilson, it's a 26 inch. I just really wanted that. But 27.5 is definitely something I'll get into at a certain point, just so I can really know what it's like. Not that I'll like full on switch to 27.5, but it would be good to own a bike like that so I can really get to know it a lot better. Where will you be in Utah? Because I live in Utah. Well, right now we're just in Green River, me and my two buddies, Wesley and Alex, and uh, we're planning on then going to Virgin for, to watch Rampage. That's basically about it. That's what our plans are. So yeah, we're just kind of sticking around Green River, going to Virgin, and that's about it. Downhill or dirt jumping? Probably downhill. I think I would say downhill, but I do like dirt jumping a lot. Your very first mountain bike and your recent mountain bike. Well, my very first mountain bike was a bike that was way too big for me. It was a 2004, Norco Wolverine. It was a 22 inch size frame. Way too big for me. I was like 15 or something, 14 or 15 at the time. And I don't know why I bought something so massive, but uh, yeah, that was my first bike. <laughs> and then my most recent bike, as I've told you guys about, is my 2014 Carbon Da Vinci Wilson. What inspired you to start mountain biking? It was actually a friend in grade seven, a new guy he came to grade seven, he was into mountain biking. I was already always into like hit and jumps with like a BMX bike, right? And like into biking and hit and jumps, right? So, so then when he came, introduced mountain biking to me, I just thought it was super cool. So then I had to buy a bike and the rest is history. What made you choose a downhill bike over an enduro bike? Did you consider over forking a 160 millimeter enduro bike? Um, I'm just not really interested in enduro bikes for the most part. Um, I'm more of a downhill free rider anyway, so that would be why I want a downhill bike. At some point I'd want to get like an enduro bike, maybe like a six inch travel enduro bike. I think those would be pretty good. Um, but I definitely want something bigger for, to handle all that I do, right? So how come you're so good at breaking Norco true axes? Well, uh, I think it's because I overuse it, honestly. I think that's what's going on. I think that the frame is just not made for, for going as hardcore as I do. Uh, I mean, I'm hitting like crapple hits with this thing and like, I don't know. I just honestly think that I'm like going too far with the bike. I think that the bike's not even made for like all that I do, which I kind of thought it was, but maybe not. Ever gonna travel around the US at all? Washington has some good stuff. Yeah, it definitely has some good stuff and I'd love to travel around the US a whole lot more 
This is like the first time riding in the US, which is weird, but like, yeah, there's so much out here in the States, especially like in Washington right next door. So yeah, I absolutely plan on riding in the States a lot more, especially Washington and all that kind of stuff, definitely. I love to go to California, Colorado. Oh yeah, all that kind of stuff. Worst bike of all time that you had. That would probably be my first bike, which was my 22 inch Norco Wolverine. It was just way too big for me, right? What is the best bike you've ever owned? Now that's a bit hard to tell actually. I kind of like to say that every new bike I've had was the new best bike I've ever owned in a way. Um, but they're just different in a way though. Like I had, when I had my Norco Empire, I thought that was like the coolest bike ever. It was so sick. Five inches in the rear, about six inches in the front. I thought it was such a sweet bike and it was. The reason why I ended up going for the Norco Truax after that is because I wanted something bigger. And the Norco Truax was great and I loved it. And then now I'm feeling like, eh, I want something bigger again. The Norco Truax is too small. So then I got this downhill bike and I think this is a really cool bike for sure. But they're kind of, they're different bikes so that's the thing. They're not like the same kind of bikes, right? It's 8 inch travel bike, 7 inch travel bike. My Empire was like a 5 and 6 inch travel. So they're different kind of bikes but they're all great bikes. Um, it just They're just great for their purposes, right? So, I don't know, I, I like them all, really. What are your goals for the next year in terms of skills and YouTube? Well, I definitely want to grow a whole lot more. I want to do a lot more traveling and riding and exploring, right? I just don't do enough of that. I definitely want to do more exploring. Um, I find that I always plan that a lot and then it never really happens. And I think it's because I just get too busy. I mean, I work like, you know, like three days a week or something or sometimes when I'm in different positions, I'll work like four days a week. And because of that, it really kind of like limits how much I can get out and just travel and explore, right? But like I said, now that I have Patreon, um, that's gonna change things. Now with Patreon, with that, I can now work less and then I can travel more, I can ride more, I can just make more videos. I can put more time into YouTube and that's absolutely what I wanna do is just put a lot more time into YouTube. Um, I would love to make more videos and to do that I just need to work less and make more money through YouTube and all that kind of stuff. This isn't really a bike related question but do you ski or snowboard in the off season? I rarely ever snowboard. I own a snowboard still but it's been a long time, probably like eight years since I've snowboarded last. But it is fun but man I just haven't done it in a long time. So basically no. When did you first start mountain biking? Yeah that was like a good 13 years ago I think in 2003 pretty much something like that what made you go with the older da vinci frame rather than the newer frame it pretty much all comes down to the fact that it's a 26 inch bike that's about it really um there isn't really much any reason other than that um i always like getting newer bikes so that would be awesome it's just i kind of missed out on the whole 26 inch dh bike thing because i never owned a dh bike before and i really wanted to get one so that was kind of the main reason. I just wanted a 26 inch DH bike and I also didn't have too much money to start spending on like newer bikes and all that kind of stuff. So I guess that's really kind of what it was. Tell us what made you go with the DaVinci Wilson. Um, yeah, I just think they're really cool bikes. Uh, I like the geometry, um, testing them out. I just, I just had really good times with them, good impressions with them when I tested them out, like rented them or whatever. Um, and then ultimately, I don't know, I just gotta go with what I know and what I like. So. When are you getting a sponsorship? I think you could get one, honestly. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I, first of all, want to get sponsorship. Second of all, um, since I released Patreon, you guys can be my sponsors. And I, do, I honestly think that is the best kind of sponsors that I could have, is you guys. Um, so that's why I'm stoked about releasing Patreon, finally. Um, I just don't like being tied down to a certain company um, I like having more freedom and like with Patreon like that does give me a whole lot more freedom with you guys as my sponsors so <laughs> honestly yeah that's like my favorite kind of sponsor is like my fans like that's the best kind of sponsorship but yeah like I've, I've definitely thought about you know sponsorship from companies and I've I, I put a little bit of effort into like you know reaching out to some companies here and there but I didn't try that hard because I guess I just wasn't terribly interested I was just kind of seeing what would happen and I didn't really get much response I'm not so opposed to bike sponsorship, but we'll see. When will you come ride the shore again? It would be awesome to shred with you. Yeah, I love the North Shore. Uh, Cypress, Seymour, and Frome are all awesome. I absolutely love the shore, and so I intend on riding there a whole lot more. Um, I hope to do it some more this fall before it gets like all snowy and cold and crappy, so we'll see. I would love to go out there more. I absolutely should, so I definitely want to do that more. 
Will you ever suey? Um, I would like to try suicide no handers. Um, some of my friends do, and then I just, I don't know, I'm like more scared of taking my, my hands off the pedals. I'm more comfortable taking my feet off, but my, taking my hands off, I don't know. I'd love to try that. It would be awesome if you came up to Eureka, Montana. We're 45 minutes from Fernie, BC, or about 50 minutes from Whitefish. So you're at a good base camp for a ton of fun trails. I live in Eureka and it would be great to meet you. Yeah, that actually does sound really cool. Um, that would be really cool. I haven't even ridden Fernie yet, so I have to ride Fernie. And I'd love to check out Eureka and Montana. Sure, I would love to. So maybe we'll see what happens next year, but yeah. So I thought this was a really interesting question here. So someone asks, why do you think pretty much all other mountain bike YouTubers surpassed your sub count, even though you're like the most OG I think I know? Um, yeah, that's actually kind of a cool question because I noticed that um, all these other YouTubers are like passing me in like sub count and in popularity over, over the past like year and a bit and they're just like growing faster than me. I'm like, what is going on? It's crazy. It's, it's, I mean, it's cool. It shows like the potential for mountain bike YouTubers. That's what it shows, it's, which is a great thing. So when I started this channel, that was in 2012, like earlier 2012. And then there wasn't really any other guys doing this very much. Like they were all like, Sure, there were some mountain bike channels, but none of them were really getting popular at all. I was one of the most popular mountain bike YouTubers for quite a while, but I wasn't actually that big, right? And so I was growing pretty slowly. Um, and then all of a sudden, like last year, I discovered like Seth Bike Hacks, right? And then, uh, you know, Skills with Phil. And like, I discovered BKXC when he was at like 2,000 subscribers or something. And, uh, and what, like Nate Hills, all that kind of stuff, single track sampler. And then I would, I was just kind of intrigued by their channels, you know, and, and then even though some of them like BKXC was really small at the time, I couldn't help but notice how fast he was growing. I couldn't believe it, it was crazy. And then, uh, and same with like Nate Hills, single track sampler, all this kind of stuff. Seth Bike Hacks, like what the heck? And I was like, I want some of this, you know, like how are they growing so much faster than me? I've been doing it like a lot longer and I, I and it's awesome for them. Like, I don't mean to be like jealous, like it's totally awesome for them. It shows that you know, there's much potential, right? That's what it shows that, you know, if I really work at this a lot harder, I can really grow into like something bigger than I originally thought, which is great. So it's really kind of opening the doors for me. There also wasn't really anybody to collaborate with before too. And now like there's people to collaborate with so we can all kind of like feed off each other, which is great and learn from each other. And so then that's what I've been doing a lot is just learning from them a lot. To answer your question though, uh, why do I think that they really surpassed me? Um, they're really giving their personality a lot in the videos and I feel like that's something that I was kind of missing in my videos. I wasn't giving enough personality. Uh, that's that's kind of what I think, that I need to give more of my own personality. Maybe I need to put my face on camera a little bit more, perhaps, or, or give my opinions, give my voice, here, you know, or, or just kind of show my voice. So that's kind of why I started to do more voiceover uh, over my videos as well. It's include a bit more personality and just less polished production stuff because like while I love making polished like edited videos um, with like sweet music and stuff I love making that um, I can understand that it doesn't really help people to relate to you more so I kind of got to get people relating to me more and so I want to be able to kind of humanize this channel a bit more and so that's kind of what I'm trying to do I think that the other channels have been doing a very good job of just kind of like having a personality attached with that channel. Seth Bike Hacks, absolutely. There's the quirks and kind of the, the sense of humor that you find in there. And then like BKXC, you know, he's just traveling everywhere and he's just like stoked on everything, which is awesome, right? And Skills with Phil, you know, and what? Single track sampler, they're just like, you, you get their personalities a whole lot more, which is great. So I'm gonna try to do that a bit more with my channel um, as much as I'm comfortable, cause I'm honestly not terribly comfortable putting my face on camera all the time. Um, I'm not a vlogger, um, and that's fine, I, I don't have to be, but you know, we're all a bit different. I'm just trying to really learn how to improve my channel a lot more. Uh, Lone Ranger asked me, when are we going to meet up to ride? Also, what is your favorite area to ride during the winter months in the PNW? Cheers, dude. Yeah, I would love to meet up to ride. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if we can meet up anymore this year. I mean, it's getting into winter time. I don't know if there's anything to ride much at all. Maybe we're going to have to wait until springtime, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'd love to ride with you whenever we could, as soon as possible, man. Uh, I mean, I know you're from Alberta. There's probably not much riding out there, especially now the winter's coming. So when you ask where is my favorite place to ride in the Pacific Northwest in the winter time, 
not that it's my favorite place to ride, but like I just end up riding a lot of local trails. Um, my local trails like Better Mountain in Chilliwack is great. Uh, Ledgeview in Abbotsford, I just ride a lot there. Not that it's that great, but I just ride there a lot. Or Bear Mountain Mission is really good. They're just local trails. And since the Fraser Valley where I'm from is the most uh, mild place in probably almost all of Canada, it doesn't have too much snow. So you can actually like ride there a lot and it's not covered in snow. So not that those are my favorite places to ride in the winter, but they're kind of like the only places I can ride. <laughs> Obviously you can't do Whistler, North Shore, not so much. They're mostly covered in snow a lot of time. But yeah, I just do a lot of local stuff, Chilliwack, Mission, Abbotsford. What do you plan on doing with your old Norco? Uh, I'm planning on selling my Norco Truex. I definitely need the money. Um, I can't keep it. I kind of would like to keep it, but no, I, I can't keep it. Ever ride any fat bikes? No, I have not. Uh, I think that would be cool to check out, wouldn't it? Um, just huge fat tires. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm not sure if I'm really interested in getting one of those ever, but it'd be kind of cool to try them out. When are you going to be at Ledgeview next? <laughs> I don't know. Probably soon because I ride there quite a bit. Why did you buy a Norco Truax? That was... I, kinda, I think I kind of mentioned that earlier, is because I had a Norco Empire at the time, which was a great bike, but it just was not enough to travel for me. I needed some more suspension. Um, it was just a bit hard on my body, so Norco Truax going to a seven inch travel free ride bike, similar kind of geometry as the Empire. It was great, and I definitely loved it. So I, I was quite happy with when I got the Norco Truax at the time. What was the most difficult trail you've ever ridden, and what was the most fun? That is definitely hard to answer. Um, I find Goat's Gully is probably one of the more difficult ones that I ride, like at Whistler. That one's pretty intense. Most fun? Yeah, that's that's just really hard to say. I mean, I just love so much trails. I love Dirt Merchant at Whistler. Um, that's probably one of my favorites at Dirt Merchant, or like D1's pretty sweet. How often do you get to ride on average per week? I'd say during like the summertime, like the peak like riding months, like springtime, fall, summer, it's, it's like one to two times a week. And then like in winter, it's like not even once a week because like sometimes it's just too crappy. I don't want to go out too much, but on average, it's probably like up to twice a week overall. Clipped in or flat pedal? I've always ridden flats. I've never ridden clipped in in my life. I'm not sure if I ever want to ride clipped in, honestly. I don't know. It just seems a bit freaky to me. So I like flat pedals. How old do you think you'll be when you're still mountain biking? Well, that's a good question. It's hard to say. Um, I'd love to mountain bike as long as I possibly can. But of course, as I get older, I won't be able to ride the same kind of stuff, right? So um, how, if we're just talking about just mountain biking in general, oh, I could probably go for a long time, like 60s even, like into my 60s, I bet. But obviously that's much more mellow riding. But if we're talking about like free riding and how long can I free ride for? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Darren Bearcloth, he's riding Rampage. He's like in his 40s. That's pretty sweet. I would love to get like another 10 years out of like hardcore free ride, but I'm not sure. I'm 28 years old, by the way. <laughs> What's your favorite trick to do on your bike? Well, I love doing X-ups, which I could do on my Truax, obviously. Um, I can't do much tricks, so that's the thing. But an X-up, I could do, so I guess you could say that was my favorite trick. Obviously, I can't do that on my DaVinci Wilson, though, right? So, yeah, I, I like X-ups. <laughs> I just can't do much tricks, so that's the thing. Who, in your opinion, has a good mountain bike style? Like, who are your idols? Um, I always loved Martin Soderstrom. I love watching him do slope style. Um, he doesn't seem to do too much slope style events now, but I love Nikolai Rogatkin. He's awesome. I love how like he just sends it. He just goes for it. He's just crazy, right? But yeah, Martin Soderstrom has great style. I love watching him. Andreo Lagandi is pretty sweet to watch as well, and he does some like pretty cool stuff. Oh, I love uh, Simon Godziek. I think that's how you say his name. He does some really unique tricks and I just love watching him. He does some sweet stuff. So like he does like tsunamis, oh, backflip tsunamis. Like dude, like I, I love that guy as well. So and they're kind of all in slope style. What made you decide to go to a full downhill bike? Um, just because I just wanted something bigger. I wanted something that can like really handle everything that I put onto my bike. Like my Truax, like obviously I'm, it's like I've been breaking those frames because I it can't handle what I do to it, right? Not that any other seven-inch frame couldn't handle what I do, but like, still, I wanted something a little bit, a little bit longer, a little bit better for downhill. So, will you be riding Mount Forum more in other places near where you live? Yeah, absolutely. I want to ride Mount Forum a lot more. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that more this uh, in this fall as well. What is your favorite experience in New Zealand and why? Um, yeah, you know what? My favorite experience in New Zealand actually wasn't related to mountain biking 
So the reason why I went to New Zealand was for a Cape and Ray Bible School, and I only went for a 10-week program. Probably the best experience there was, um, it was like the second or third last week there. It was called this ministry week, and it was a lot of fun. It's kind of hard and random to explain what that was, but it was just like a group of like six of us, just kind of like living in different people's homes, helping out with a local church, and it was just very jam-packed with like lots of interesting and fun times, and it was just really, really cool experience, honestly. It was, it was the highlight of my whole uh, New Zealand trip, I would have to say. Um, although, if, if you want to know my favorite mountain biking experience in New Zealand, that would have been riding in Wellington. That was a lot of fun. After school was done, I drove down to the South Island, but first I rode in Wellington with one of my subscribers. I stayed at his house, went shuttling. Perfect conditions out there, just great fun trails. Oh, that was like, that was the mountain bike highlight of New Zealand. That was so much fun, so much fun. What was the best part about riding with Seth's bike hacks? You know what, I thought it was really cool just being able to like learn a lot from him, like learn like YouTube strategies. Like we talked a lot about like YouTube strategies, like when we were at Whistler, like oh, on the lift every time, we we're just like talking about like, you know, like doing this, doing that, like what, what can we do, what works, you know? So that was a really cool thing about just like, just being able to like learn from him a lot because he's so much bigger than me, right? And I, that was a really cool thing. As well as just be able to, to show him the downhill free ride scene, you know, in Whistler, that was pretty cool. How would you rate your trip to New Zealand? What went well and what didn't you enjoy? Would you go again? Yes, I loved it. It was awesome. I would definitely go again. Uh, how would I rate it? Uh, yeah, I don't know, probably like nine out of 10. Like New Zealand has really cool stuff. It was just beautiful there, right? Like, oh, it's awesome. What went well? I mean, the schooling was great, but obviously like you're probably more interested in the mountain biking stuff. I mean, the mountain biking, the mountain biking was great. Like I loved the mountain biking there. Queenstown was sweet, Wellington was awesome. Unfortunately, I didn't ride Christchurch, but I hear there's cool stuff there. Like, oh, yeah, I, I definitely would go there. What didn't I enjoy? I don't know. I don't know if there's much that I didn't enjoy. It was just a really good, good experience. I definitely want to go back to New Zealand. There's a lot more that I didn't ride yet, so yeah. Preferred wheel size, and what do you think of other wheel sizes? Well, I think you guys know 26 inch is my preferred wheel size, especially for like downhill and free ride. Um, I'm not really interested in 29 inch wheels at all <laughs> for like any kind of mountain bike discipline, but but yeah, um, I don't know if I really care for 27.5 either. Um, I haven't ridden it too much. It's just from like demo bikes, like trying like one or two runs at Whistler here and there at Crankworks, like that's about it. Like I've never owned a bike. So yeah, I would like to own a 27.5 bike at some point uh, and really get to know what it's like. But otherwise for now, I generally do like 26 inch more anyway from, from what I've tried. Can I get a shout out on my channel? Dirt Jumpa is my name. My question is, are you a skier? No, I own a snowboard, but even then I don't really snowboard. So there's your shout out. <laughs> would you come ride in Australia? Yeah, I think that would be cool. Uh, I don't have any plans though, but yeah, I mean, it's right by New Zealand. New Zealand has sweet stuff. I'm sure, I'm, I know Australia would definitely have some cool stuff, but yeah, probably at some point, but I'm not planning on it right now, right? How many bikes have you owned? Well, let's see, there's the Norco Wolverine. I bought my Brody Hellion off of my friend. Then I bought a Norco Empire, Norco Truax, Da Vinci Wilson. Just those five, honestly. Oh, hey there. <laughs> hey. AJ.MTB asks predictions for Rampage. I think that, I actually think that uh, Antoine Bizet is gonna place pretty high because he's done pretty sick and <clears throat> he's French and he shreds and goes pretty hard. And he has a double back, he's pretty dope too. Yeah. What is your social security number? What the frick? That's right. <laughs> what the frick, man? Thanks, Connor underscore Thanks for, you gonna stalk or what? Um, oh, what is your favorite bike company? Well, Jordan Boostmasters <laughs> is not Norco because true axes keep breaking. That's correct, yep. I like transition because I ride transition, and I think they're actually pretty sweet bikes. Yeah, and that's they're pretty cool. good luck. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think so. What's your favorite bike? Let's go giant. Cause they're glorious. Glorious. Do you ever plan on heading out to smash some Colorado single track and some Killer Park, other than Whistler, of course? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I really want to ride Colorado. I love single track, 
and I'd love to try out some of the bike parks out there. Absolutely. Ilias under Sid Sideropoulos says, "How do you? How did you end up buying that bike? What? What it makes it so special to you?" <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He might. Maybe he's young. <laughs> uh, I'll answer for this for Jordan. I think for anybody. When you buy a bike, I mean, at least for any of us, I like to buy a bike that's got some character, but also that I know is very good quality, um, that has like newish parts on it, and stuff that's in good condition, it's been serviced well. Um, but I also like to put my own spin on it, as you can probably see from the shreddy shred shreds. Uh, I got some pretty cool gnar. <laughs> it shows no scratch or anything. Yeah, no, are always good. no scratch, no, s yeah. Favorite pro rider, I like Graham Agassi. What's your guys' favorite pro rider? I was saying that I like uh, Martin Soderstrom, Nikolai Rogatkin, yeah. Simon Godziak. I like, really like them. I just want to see Aggie like, yeah. send it it's it's and be okay. Aggie's like my favorite. Yeah. 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 Aggie's my favorite. Hollow. That's cool. Jamie Caruthers, do you have any other hobbies? No. <laughs> 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 yes. I like to farm and all that kind of stuff. Would you rather ride a road bike or a cruiser down Whistler? I think a cruiser. I think what would you guys of, do? None of the above, because if I'm in Whistler, <laughs> I want to ride a downhill bike. Well, obviously those are the only options that you have, True. is a road bike or a cruiser. Nah, I'd probably choose a cruiser, because then you can cruise. Yeah, yeah. That, you can do six bunny cool. hops on a cruiser. Yeah. Let me ask you guys, would you ever consider riding in Europe? Of course. Yeah. If I could get, if I could get there and get a bike there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I would love to too as well. Europe is some sweet stuff. Absolutely. I actually, I actually love coming to like even to Utah and different places because BC is amazing and it never gets old. But coming mm -hmm. out to see like different places of the world. Oh yeah, it's an experience. It's yeah, amazing. Super sweet. How do you guys build your confidence in doing big drops and huge gaps? <sighs> yeah, that's a pretty relevant question. We're not very smart, we just kind of do it. It's all about a big ball sack. Yeah. That moment where you don't think you should do it is when you should do it. Oh, balls. Oh, no. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you just gotta like... Not be scared. It takes... Warm yourself into it, like... Yeah. It takes education to come, like, to come into it and to be able to know... I mean, you gotta know your own skill set, too. And if something is way out of your what you've ever done it would be stupid to do it because then you're yeah. probably gonna die or get a bad injury but you gotta like se yeah. sequentially grow yeah. yourself up to it yeah work your way up find find smaller ones to master those first yeah but when it comes to big stuff you just gotta know yeah you just gotta slowly push yourself and see other people do it speed is huge watch out for wind yeah, it's windy. yeah 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 it's pretty windy mm, what do you think about free ride hardtails? I think they're super cool. I think they're totally awesome. I think hardtails are great for like starting out on mountain biking. Mm -hmm. um, just hardtails are great for like learning what bikes do when you're like riding through rock and roots. Like, really gets you to like understand the physics more. I think hardtails are sweet. Free ride hardtails yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Spooky under Bert asks, Jordan, do you only ride park? No. I do not only ride park. Your socks don't say I only ride park. No, that's true, because Everyone I don't only ride desert. park. <laughs> I don't yeah. think it's a park. No. I ride a lot of other stuff, actually. Um, last, or this past summer at Whistler, I only did like six days worth at Whistler, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ride many other bike parks, actually, even though I wanted to. But yeah, I ride a lot more than park, a lot of local trails. I don't really think of park riding as like the best. I think it's like, a cool kind of riding but it's not like the be all end all of riding so I love like just local trails or single track stuff yeah. just local trails are super sweet I so bike. yeah yeah definitely do a lot of hiking there's not much places to shuttle but hmm. I love shuttling <laughs> yeah Ashton Hall asks who inspired you to start riding and that's for anybody my friend in grade seven hmm. who was into mountain biking hmm. I'm gonna have to go Graham Eggsy. I watch his edits when I was like probably 15. Mm -hmm. I inspired myself. Got me nice. Stoked. No, That's but actually, sweet. I haven't like, yeah. I started mountain biking like four years ago and I just, I just always wanted to do it growing up and then uh, maybe you inspired me to go mountain biking more. Downhill biking. Aww. 
Skirt, skirt. No, but then I met Wesley pretty quick and I met Jordan. So it almost it's like the mountain bike world community fed off of itself. Mm -hmm. And now we're here. Yeah. What's the most stylish trick in your opinion? I love the tail whip. I think the tail whip is like a really cool, that's like my favorite trick. I'd love to do it, I can't, but it's probably my favorite. Just a simple, basic trick. Or tsunami, I love the tsunami. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I was tsunami gonna say, flip? yeah. Backflip tsunami, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, that's I so I was gonna cool. say, I think a Superman or like I love, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, Simon Gautier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he does, especially that, uh, what's it called? Tsunami. The one, no, the one hand, he like backflip, oh. grabs the, or then. Backflip Superman seat grab? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That is so gnarly. Yeah, that's really I like, cool. Uh, I like 1440. It's totally stylish. Though. No, it's not stylish at all. <laughs> it's got its own style. It, it definitely is interesting to see someone learn that. Yeah. So I'd call it stylish. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. That's sweet. True that. That's sweet. Sweet yeah. dudes. Yeah. This has been a Q&A with Jordan Boostmaster and Alex and Wesley. Hello. Right on. Hey, sirs and ma'ams. <laughs> all right. Boys and girls. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And then you just gotta let her rip and then yeah. <laughs>